all right what's up guys uh this is blay here also known as dandy in hero of the storm um i've played some esport matches in hero of the storm um and recently i realized that tier list videos are very important um and they uh, actually rack up a lot of views <laughs> so i'm <laughs> I'm going to uh, make a tier list video for Hero of the Storm. Um, I'm a very, very decent uh, analyzer when it comes to uh, character design and uh, just figuring out how to climb. It's, it's just in my personality. Um, as an INTJ, um, it's really easy for me to see the flaws in everything. So. Uh, you can definitely look up to this tier list uh, when you're trying to climb in solo queue or like uh, yeah, just in general. Uh, basically, this this uh, tier list is for uh, characters that will work really well um, in solo queue and also in team fights, like in team games. When I come across a character that I know is going to be really good in a, in a, in, in like professional scene. Like, uh, if you have, if you have like a five man team or whatever, um, if I come across, across a character that has an advantage in both of that, I'm going to point it out. And basically I'm going to explain how all of these characters are and their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so let's do this. So, um, how I'm going to be tier listing these characters, um, basically, um, these are the characters that you're going to pick up, even if, like, you haven't played a game, like, you don't have, like, a, a full understanding of the game, um, and how it works, like, as at an advanced level, like, these are the characters that you can pick up and play them, and don't have to worry about, like, like which type of abilities does what and like how I'm how supposed to build my character and stuff like that. Like if you don't know how to build them yet, right? These are the type of char characters that you can pick and still be like useful um, no matter which type of build that you make or whatever, you know, like you will actually have like a basic sense of uh, of how the character work just by picking them up. And then there are characters that you can pick them up and you can like build them properly, but you also have to play them properly, right? So there are like two things, like, or you can either play them properly, but you don't have to build that actually like, that actually gets a, a good amount of value out of them. Like these are the type of characters uh, that are going to be a bit difficult and they are going to rank lower in my tier list. Like basically characters uh, based on your, on like their skill caps, right on their skill caps the higher it is the lower um they're going to be on the tier list but the easier it is for you to like pick them up and like be useful to your team and like be useful in various scenarios like on different type of maps and stuff the higher the um the higher up the list they're going to be all right so i'm just going to go from here all the way here so as you guys can see we have all the characters uh, pretty much hogger is even here we have uh, Morganis, we have Deathwing as well, and we have Quera. Like these are like the newest, like recently um, introduced characters in the game. All right, so we're gonna start here with um, Abitur. Um, Abitur or whatever you might call him, is a support character. Um, he's from uh, Starcraft or whatever, and um, he is a very, very insanely strong character, right? Um, if you are like a like a master player or whatever, and you've been playing Arbiter and you know how to play him properly, Arbiter is an S tier for you, right? Um, however, because this tier list is based on characters that anybody can pick up, and you can just play them with almost like any generic build that you could, you can come up with, you know, that is not like meta or whatever. Right. I mean, like you can play them with like the meta bill um, because meta bill is like build that will work for pretty much anybody. Um, so, yeah, so Arbiter, um, just to put it simply, Arbiter is not a type of character that anybody can pick up and just play and be successful at. So how he works is um, he's a multi-tax 
type of character, multitasking <laughs> type of character. Um, when you play an avatar, you need to be able to show up to team fights uh, with your hats, and you need to at the same time manage everything, like macro manage everything on the uh, on the map, pretty much. So you are hatting minions, attacking, giving them shields, hatting your allies, um, doing some little bit of attacks and stuff like that. And there are many ways that you can build Arbiter, and there are many ways that you can go wrong building Arbiter. Um, apart from building him, there's also like a risky type of gameplay that comes with playing Arbiter. Uh, when I play Arbiter, I don't just sit in the... Uh, I don't just sit in my fort and just like and just hats people and like give them attack speed and stuff like that. When I play Arbiter, I like to be all over the map. I like to put my minds all around the map, giving um, players. I think everybody actually does this, like giving players visions and all of that stuff of the overall um, view of the map. And it's just it's just so much stuff that you have to do when you are playing Arbiter that a new player. Who's who gonna pick this character up will actually be overwhelmed in a match and <clears throat> and their potential to climb and be consistent um, as they try to climb is gonna be super low. Right? So because of that, I'm gonna take Arbiter and put him in the uh, I'm gonna put him in uh in B tier. Uh B tier because like Apart from you playing Arbiter properly, there are also other extender factors that can actually contribute to you losing a match, right? Well, if you pick Arbiter and you have uh, an Illidan, right? For example, it's Arbiter, Illidan, uh, normal combo, whatever. Like, they do their stuff together. They are very strong together. But what if your Illidan is actually not that good at all at playing the game, right? And he, he always, like, he always just jumps in and he just dies. And he's like doing some wild stuff. He's not like listening to your ping. Like sometimes you like you run out of cooldowns and you want him to retreat and stuff like that. Or sometimes you don't want him to take some fights, but he still goes in anyway and he's just dying, right? In situations like that, like in cases like that, right? It's very easy for you to lose match. And if you are playing a character that actually needs other character, um, that actually relies on other character to be successful, right? You know, there's nothing you can do in such case um, cases, right? Um, so that's one of the reasons why a better win rate is kind of low. Because first up, you need some, you need a team that actually know how to comp around you, and you need a team that actually has good game sense um, when you are playing. And that is kind of rare to actually come across in solo queue, because in solo queue you want to carry by yourself, and uh, Arbiter is mostly a team based character. So I'm going to bring him down in B tier because, you know, he's fun to play, okay? That's part of the reason why he's going up a little bit. Um, and there are many ways you can build him, and there are many ways you can play him and all that stuff. And I don't want to just put him in D tier because he's not garbage, right? Some Arbiter, I mean, some Arbiter players just play him to get experience uh, for their teams, and some Arbiter play him... Um, Arbiter players play him to be super aggressive and stuff like that. So he's not that bad. Um, and he's not, I don't think he's that difficult to learn. Uh, so he's going to be in B tier for now. Uh, should I put him in B tier? I feel like B is actually a bit too high for Arbiter. Like, if you pick Arbiter, the, the chance for your allies to actually tilt is super high. You know what? I'm going to put him in D tier. Um, again, I'm bringing him lower in uh, D tier because his skill cap is not that, it's not that simple. It's, his skill cap is super high. Um, the chance of your allies tilting uh, because you pick Arbiter is also high. The chance of you losing a match because your the guy that you're supposed to be hatting doesn't know what he's doing. Um, is also high <laughs> and the chance of like you losing based on your team not as a not working as a group um, Not having good game sense is also really high and the fact that you're gonna be in solo queue and You have to play persistently and you have to like super you have to like always multi you have to always have um 
like an overall view of like how the match is going you have to always multitask like each time you play him and sometimes you might have actually have finger cramps or whatever when you play him and the chance of that happening is super high so there are many reasons why arbitrary is going to drop down in the tier list um because of his difficulty right so i'm going to put him in d tier okay <laughs> i don't know how long that was maybe like five minutes me explaining arbiter all right next is alarak um alarak is actually um based on value i don't think alarak contribute much value to his team um alarak is a melee character uh he brings silence and he brings some decent burst damage and he's uh he brings control as well like you can pull enemies towards you you can push yourself away and you can like do some stuff like that right um however there aren't a lot of people playing alarak because alarak is really hard to play and he's a very difficult um he's a very risky character right alarak is one of those guys that you actually to play him right you need to make a build that actually requires you to stack up on something right like a global actually it's not global like global characters are like people that like go all over the map or whatever um you have to play him with like stacks and stuff like that and if you kill him um if he dies he actually loses stacks and stuff like that so it's kind of easy for you to snowball your way, your way downhill uh, when you're playing alarak and you don't know how to play him and uh, <clears throat> I actually won't recommend learning Alarak, right? It's, Alarak is not a type of character that I would recommend learning because you could do a lot of... You could actually achieve what he brings to the table. You can achieve that and, and some more by learning other characters in a short amount of time. Alarak is that is that character that he's just... He's like the average character, but it just takes like extra time to actually learn, right? So... um because of that i'm gonna put him in uh in b tier uh because his skill cap is uh i don't think it's that high like it's not that high at all um you need good uh game sense and like he's not something that you would take into a professional scene uh honestly um unlike this guy like all right, so these guys in here, between here, like this ranking level, um, are basically generic characters, like characters that are like, you know, like if you are here, you are just basically generic, right? There's like no really important reason for somebody to learn this character. When you come down here, it's like challenging characters, like as you go down to D tier, right? Um, these are characters that are very, very challenging, but if you learn them, uh, it's... It's, it's a rare case that somebody will master these characters, but if you do, like, you can be really seen with a good team. Um, and S tier is, like, characters that anybody can, like, pick up and learn and actually be useful to your team. And you can even be very, very um, influential in a match as compared um, to these type of characters, right? If you are in here, you are kind of like a generic character. So Alaric is generic, <laughs> in my opinion. And uh, he's difficult, but he's difficult for like no reason, honestly, right? Um, again, you can you can get what he has um, with other characters, so that's why he's here. Um, I call her Alistraza. Alistraza is a dragon. Uh, I call her. Uh, oh my God, I forgot the name. Uh, she's a dragon uh aspect she's an aspect um these are like super powerful beings in my opinion she's like the hottest character in the entire game in the entire game <laughs> yeah that's that's my opinion she's like the hottest character she's like she's really thick uh and yeah alistraza is a healer um her healer i mean her heels are burst and her heels I uh, bountiful, right? Um, she's she's um, her ultimate is really really decent. Um, she got like an ultimate that can like basically take her out of the fight, and then she has an ultimate that can actually make a team disengage automatically just by activating that ultimate. It actually makes you, the the enemy team actually just 
they just be like, this is it. We're going to back up here. There's nothing else we can do in this, in this case. Right. Um, that's, that's like, that's how it goes each time she owes uh with a dragon out right so alistraza is like a really uh decent character um her character design looks really amazing uh i think her lore is also really decent um her abilities are really really decent as well um <laughs> on like alarak which like all all alarak voice voice line kind of like um it's e um they are all egotistical pretty much He's like, go and tell everybody about the victory that I've won here. And like, he's like so selfish and stuff, like in all his voice line, pretty much. Um, sometimes when you hear him, you be like, do you call this heels? <laughs> I've seen better healers than this, right? Um, anyways, Alistraza. Um, Alistraza is, uh, is a healer that takes I don't know. I don't think it takes that that much time to learn. Um, I think as in compared to some of these healers here. But Alistraza, when you want to play her, you should be willing to learn about positioning, right? Um, she's like a melee-ish character. Um, I mean, she's like a range, like a mid-range character. And her basic, I mean, she has like um, I think it's her W. Like some people like skill bond that that ability so different stuff. But however, she has like this ability that when she, when you use it on enemies, it kind of like stacks up and it can like slow them down. I like to take that in um, whatever buffs it or whatever. Um, I like to take that each time I play her. And uh, I think I think it's really it's it, it comes into use. It has a lot of value um, when you're doing team fight with like really really uh, beefy melee characters that like to like run into your allies. Like you can slow them down and allow, allow your allies to like burst them down slowly but surely. Like people like Diablo, if you go against them and you just slowing them down, like it makes it really hard for them to engage and disengage and like set up for their allies and stuff. And just basic stuff like that kind of like brings value to Alistraza. Um, because of this, I will actually take Alistraza and put her in S tier uh, because she's not really that hard to learn. Um, you just need to know how to position properly as a support character. Obviously, you don't want to be in the middle of the fight. You want to be in the back line a little bit and just, you know, poking if you want to attack and stuff and just keeping track of your cooldowns and stuff like that. And sometimes you try to make good use out of your ultimate. You also have an ability um, that kind of like, I think it reduces your cooldown for ultimate and stuff like that. So, um with someone that has like an ultimate that is this useful that is really useful in, in team fights and stuff if you know how to play her properly you can bring a huge advantage to your allies and to your team and uh, increase the chance of you guys winning and uh i don't know like her chance of winning really doesn't i don't think it depends on her allies that much like in a sense like when i'm talking about like chance of winning i'm talking about like team fights and all that stuff alistraza does an insane amount of damage um if you are always poking with her like if you are always attacking and stuff and the fact that she can slow people and all that stuff also contributes to the chance of your allies winning uh, a team fight so when you are playing her you want to be with your with your tank for the most part and you want to always contribute you always want to be doing stuff that will contribute to you winning the fight and if you know how, how to play her properly um your chance of winning matches is pretty high. So this is why she's going to go in S tier. Uh, and also, like, anytime somebody pick Alistraza, like, the team is, is usually happy because, like, Alistraza look amazing. Like, when she when she flashes on the screen, on the screen like, everybody can be like, whoa, look at that, look at that character, right? Um, yeah, also that. Anna, Anna, Anna. Anna is a, it's a healer. Um, she's a... She's a sniper in a sense. Um, and when I say sniper, like I have like extra emphasis on a sniper because like everything you do with with Anna, um, it's a skill shot based step of thing. And uh, you really have to be decent with like hitting, like aiming pretty much. Like you have to have decent uh, eyesight or whatever. And uh, you need to be able to like, to land your heels, you need to be able to like predict 
where your allies are going towards, right? And then shoot at that location. And then based on the time and the space and uh, the direction of your of your shot, you can actually land your heels on your on your allies and stuff like that. And Ana is like a squishy character, like unlike Alistraza. Alistraza is not that squishy in a sense. Um, Ana is a bit squishier in a sense. And uh, when you get on her, it's really easy to kill her. However, she has a lifesteal thing, right? Um, Ana is very difficult to play because her abilities are skill shot based. However, in the right hand, Ana is a beast, right? Um, her auto attacks um, um, inflate poison or whatever onto enemies. Um, those doses that you put on the enemies, uh, you can slow them with it. And if you stack that up, that's a lot of damage. And if you are using your your passive, you can actually heal off of those off of those shots and stuff like that. So, Ana is a uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say it because like she's like really uh she's not like a like a fan favorite character in my opinion. Um she's not a noob friendly character. Uh, because like positioning matters with her, aiming matter matters with her, and like it's very crucial that you can land your your heels, otherwise your ally will never get heals throughout the entire match. And if somebody is pressuring Anna. Um, if she start to like shoot out her, her healing ability, it can actually they can actually intercept that ability, right? If they are standing right in front of her and she try to like heal somebody across, the ability that she's I mean the shot that she's gonna be shooting out is actually gonna be hitting the enemy instead of actually hitting her allies. So people can actually stop her and interrupt her from healing and stuff like that. So um it's, it's a really tough time when you're playing Ana and uh, like you're playing Ana with like Tracer and stuff. Um, that's one of the things, right? Um, this, like picking this character is all about like, if you pick a character, can they like work with any type of generic team comp or whatever like that, right? Like um, Alistraza could heal Tracer um, by sacrificing some of her health and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, like, it's, it's gonna be difficult like anybody to heal Tracer. Uh, Tracer is Tracer obviously, but I'm just using her, her as an example. Um, but it's gonna be like super difficult for Ana to heal somebody like Tracer. Uh, so like because you have to like aim your shot and Tracer is like running all around, dashing all around, like doing her stuff, being sneaky and stuff. <laughs> Come on love, <laughs> and stuff like that, right? Uh, so I'm gonna take Ana and put her in uh, B tier because you can take any character and like um, learn them and get a lot of value out of them instead of learning Ana. Um, I think Ana is a bit generic in my opinion uh, because like it's, it's just super hard to learn her and like play her in the right way and you could do that with somebody else all right um, and be consistent with her right um, you could pick somebody up um, somebody else up and learn them in a very short time and get insane value out of them um, instead of landing on them. All right, B, I mean, uh, how you call this guy? Anduin. Um, Anduin is a new character uh, from World of Warcraft. Uh, he's a prince, I guess. Um, he's, I think, the son of Viren or something like that. Uh, so, <clears throat> rumor says he's gay. Uh, that's not me, though. Uh, I heard that Endwin is gay. Uh, so, yeah, this is the L G P T G E F A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S D U V D S Y Z. He's a L um L G B T Q R char um character, and uh, anyways, he's a healer, right? Endwin's has a a decent utility slot. Um, he can pull people towards him. He can like basically stop damage from coming towards his ally with his ultimate and his heal is really insane as well. And um, he can also like stun, no, not like stun people. He can like bind people, right? Um, yeah, he's a really decent character and Endway is not that hard to play, right? He's, he's really easy to play and like you can get a decent amount of value out of him um, as a new player or like as an advanced player as well. Um, just by learning him, you can get a lot of value. 
um i don't think anduin has a lot of damage uh to contribute towards damage um within team fights and stuff but the utility that he has is like his advantage and like unlike unlike most of these characters right his utility is is really really strong uh so i'm gonna put him in s tier too for healing um anubarak anubarak is a starcraft character he's one of the zergling uh characters and he's uh it's a pretty strong character. I'm not gonna lie. I know Barra is a pretty strong character in the right hand. Um, the only problem is that Anubarak is a bit of a squishy character. I'm not gonna lie. Like in my opinion, I think Anubarak is a bit squishier than most thing in the game. Um, all you gotta do is like get out of his way when he's charging in, stun him, and then and just kill him. Right? His he got shields, but his shields is not that big. Um, like the the overall uh value capacity is not that big um if you're building our new barack you want to build him as a lifesteal character and you want to build a lot of beetles or whatever like you want to build a lot of spawns and stuff for our new barack it's kind of like like some of these characters here um that you really don't depend on shield or like on on uh on armor and stuff you basically have to depend on stuff like a uh, lifesteal, right? Um, some of these tanks here, where are they? <laughs> like some of some of these guys, right? Um, you have to build them on a lifesteal type of type of um, build, like type of stats, in order for you to like be able to like sustain yourself in fights and stuff. I know Barak produce. I mean, uh, he has stuns, and he he he's very uh. He's very decent on maps with like narrow, narrow uh, entrances, like um, against enemies. Uh, because like when you land your stun, I mean when you throw your stun down, it can like go straight into a straight path, and like it can hit more people. The narrow, the narrow the path is. Um, so, apart from that though, like if you are a new player and you don't know how to engage, when to engage, not like how to engage, like when to engage and where to engage um it will be really really easy for you to like kill yourself pretty much like for you to just feed yourself to the enemies right so anubarai is not that type of character that anybody can pick up and like learn and just be super useful on and like he doesn't bring anything unique to the table um that other characters don't have like that other tanks don't have um and learning him is like it's your personal like interest like it, it takes your personal interest um for you to learn like you, you actually want to be like passionate about anubarak in order to like play him right um unlike most of these characters right so i mean you have to be passionate about him to like play him and stuff uh to dedicate your time to learn him and stuff like that so uh because of that i'm actually thinking where i should put him um yeah, also, also, I'm actually going to be talking about um, if you were to, like, pick Anubarak, where will you find, like, resources? Like, these are characters that if you can, if you pick them, like, you can ask around and, like, a lot of other players are playing them and it will be very easy for you to learn from those guys. And these are, like, characters that, like, not a lot of people are playing. Uh, not a lot of people are playing, so you cannot really get that much resource um, if you were to try to learn them in the first place, right? um like you don't have role models like people playing them people who are very passionate about them and stuff like that right um i mean this this guy a lot of people play him but like some of these characters um it's really hard for you to find people that really play them and play them in the right way so i'm gonna take i know barack and put him in the b tier uh as a generic character um i know a lot of Anubarak player who are very passionate about Anubarak, but um, it is what it is. Uh, there are other tanks that will be a lot more useful in team fights uh, than Anubarak. Hold up, hold up a second. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Um, he has an ultimate that can actually ticks. He can actually take a character out of a fight. Like you can basically add, you can basically just take one of the characters out of the team fight and shit like that, like for several minutes. 
because of that because of that ability right i'm gonna take him and put him a tier just because like you can just like if you are going against a diablo for example and you want to like have your allies and um engage and stuff like that and diablo is in a way you can just cocoon him for example and allow your allies to dive uh the enemies just because of that ability he's gonna get ranked up uh, one tier um yeah yeah i'm gonna keep him here um also it's like it actually takes some game sense in order for you to use that ability and like use it wisely right um i mean i actually get impact from it right um so that's that right because he has that ability the fact that he can actually ask um take away your character from an entire team fight he's gonna get ranked up but it actually is a personal thing of um like you have to have game sense in order to like get good value out of them so that's why it's not gonna go in s tier or it's not gonna like go uh here i mean it's not that hard to learn also all right so uh let's do uh our tennis our tennis is a starcraft character too he's a protoss um I don't know. He's like, he's a Protoss unit, right? Um, a lot of these characters, like they have clones of them, a lot of clones of them. Uh, so he's not that unique. Um, but anyways, his his uh, he as a character is unique, but his looks is not that unique <laughs> because there are like so many other characters that look exactly like him. He's a unit, pretty much. Um, you guys know what a unit is, like something that is not that important, pretty much, like individually. Uh, so uh yeah our tennis is uh he does the swap and depending on your build you might be trading your life for for an enemy or you can you can like trade the enemy in and then walk away and or engage and like stay in the team fight until the enemy is dead but our tennis is like like he's an agile character right um like he he does swoop in like this and like he dashes forward dashes back and all that stuff so you have to kind of like know your geometry <laughs> in order to play him properly you have to like know where you're gonna dive in how you're gonna get out if you do if you i mean after you dove in like stuff and stuff like that um so yeah our tennis is not that hard though to learn um but game sense is also very important very crucial when you are playing our tennis because like like i said earlier right like if you are if you are about to swipe in somebody you should make sure that you, you are not trading in one for one and if you are about to like engage on the enemy you should know that like they're also going to be doing damage towards you and stuff like that but you know what our tennis like if you build him properly he's very tanky like he's one of those characters that, that like when you think he's about to die like he actually just pull off some random tricks and he actually don't die like his shield is like it's like so strong like a tennis shield um a tennis shield build which i actually build myself uh when i play bruiser i usually build them uh with like one ability that, that actually does damage and then the rest of the abilities that they have is going to be contributed towards like team fights and like just keeping them in fight and just in, in a fight and just bruising right um my main bruiser is chen um but we want to rank him later <laughs> right um anyways our tennis is our tennis and uh he does a lot of damage uh, a lot of people like go and quest build with our tennis and uh he can really melt he can melt people <laughs> he can melt other bruiser bruisers um he does insane percentage damage uh to people like deathwing and stuff like that so if you are going against like chunky guys and like you want to really like take them out like just chunk away their health um you can go quest build our tennis and you have to like actually like be super aggressive in the, in the early stages of the match so that you can get some hits in onto the enemies to like actually finish your quest and stuff like that um, this this is one of the reasons why I don't I don't take quest build for most of my characters that I play, um, because like like you could get value by like doing setups for your allies with our tennis, um, but also you can get value by like doing damage yourself, 
right when i play people when i play bruisers i usually focus on like setting up for my allies and like just you know bruising is basically like a support type of thing right you want your allies to be able to hit the enemy but you also want to like debuff them in a sense and just make them uh focus on you a little bit and like just make them not not make them feel uncomfortable uncomfortable that's that, that's the overall point right um so when you are playing people like tennis if you want to be the main dps that's fine with you but when i'm playing our tennis I, I i want to like be able to like set up for my allies by like pulling enemies in uh, by going into the fights and like sustaining myself and like living uh for a longer time with like my shield and like depending on that right and just aggroing the enemy and actually allowing my ally to do damage as well um because our tennis is not that hard to learn um and he's also really really useful in most of uh the maps um because he can burn like in a uh uh there's a map <laughs> with like the immortals and stuff our tennis is really useful on that map and there are several maps um actually most of hero of the storm maps that usually like a big a big boss or like some beefy uh um mobs and ass that actually come out towards your base and stuff like that and you can like swipe them through and like kill them really really fast because of that i'm gonna take our tennis and like uh i'm gonna put him in uh in a hmm Artenis is a, is basically another melee. Like he don't have stun, but his swipes is really useful. And if you actually learn how to play him, you can like, you can basically do a, a lot of pickups and stuff like a pickups. Um, in terms of his spider queen, like you can be super useful and all that. I'm gonna point him in S tier. Uh, he's really hard to kill. Artenis can like one v one v three pretty much and uh and come out with like one hit point and like a, <laughs> a huge chunk of his uh remaining hit point as a shield or whatever um he's very new friendly i'm not gonna lie like attendance is new friendly like all you have to know is that whenever you're about to swipe somebody you should you should have it in mind that you you yourself will get killed right so yeah i'm gonna put him s tier he's really useful if you learn him and uh he's very impactful and if you pick him doing a draft people will not get pissed off because like not a lot of people know how to play bruiser bruiser in the first place and not a lot of people like playing melee characters in the first place so i don't think they're gonna get tilted uh easily by picking out tennis uh how you call him uh <laughs> jesus christ the frost guy uh I forgot his name. I'm not. Uh, let's see. After no. Jesus, the Lich, the Lich King or whatever his name is. I'm just gonna call him the Lich guy. Um. Arthas, Arthas. There you go. Arthas is a uh, it's a World of Warcraft character. He's very famous. Whatever. Um, Frostborn or whatever. Frostmore something something uh yeah this character is a tank um he's one of those characters that is like anuba Bar anu barak um that you have to like build him with like a lot of life steel in your build to like be useful in your team fights and stuff um the coolest thing about him that makes him a lot better than anu barak is his ultimate as well and his ability to like root people in place and like he's like so tanky like he's so hard to kill like Arthas going against a lot of physical damage dealers, it's like almost impossible to kill him. He can slow you by coming close to closer towards you doing team fights. And if you attack him and stuff, like your your attacks is actually slow down. Like you, you attack him a lot slower each time you attack him and stuff. I don't know, like it doesn't stack, but he can like slow your attack speed, he can slow your movement speed, he can root you, he can disable your um your your buildings your structures and stuff like his uh, his ultimate can basically like freeze everything in his path and basically like if he line it up properly he can like five men right he can like freeze five guys in a row um basically your entire enemy team he's really really good um 
but the problem is that Artis is a melee character and like unlike most of these characters that can just rush in like like they can just catch you off guard right Artis is not that type of character like you actually have to like walk towards them right and like actually engage onto them like physically like walk towards them and stuff like you cannot really be sneaky and stuff like that right <laughs> like diablo like basically when you play diablo you want to like go into the brush and like wait a little bit when somebody come closer like you like you slam them into the wall bang like that and then flip them over or you can just rush towards them and flip them over immediately or you can jump towards them if you have like that talent and then like flip them over into the stun like there are so many ways that other people can engage, right? Arthas, like he's a he's a warming army. Like you have to like walk towards your enemy and like actually bring fear towards them. Garage, for example, like you can like you can like knock them up and then go towards them and like flip them over, or you can like flip them over and like like knock them up and stuff. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Arthas, though, like you have to like walk towards them and like or you can like freeze them and then walk towards them and stuff like that um anyways what i'm talking about is that like like follow-ups right um a lot of these things have follow-ups abilities but after this like he has just one set of um of locomotion in a sense um one set of movement that he has to do each time you want to engage uh so like after this kind of like like blaze right um for example all right so uh we're gonna take Arthas. We're going to put him in the... If you learn Arthas, he can be very, very useful to a team fight. And I'm going to put him in S tier because he's, he's really good. Like, he's not that hard to learn. Like, if you're a tank, you want to be, like, between the enemy and your allies. And you want to take your allies into fights that you know that you can win. And you want to, like, position yourself in a way that your allies actually have space to actually position, position themselves as well right so like you don't want to go through a narrow path right um as a tank because all your allies are going to be behind you and like if you were to take damage while going through that path right your allies won't know what to do because like you have to go through that path before they can actually go through and if they were if there was like a stun coming straight towards you and stuff like that right you don't have like a shield in front of you or whatever and uh like i'm talking about stuff like that right so um anyways after this it's gonna be in s tier uh so that's that right when you're tanking tanking is really hard like some people think tanking is like the easiest um easiest thing in the game next to like healing or whatever but tanking and healing are very very hard things to do um so when you're playing artists you want to know how to position yourself and you just want to like watch some tanking videos right uh we have dang it's a long list uh, we have Ariel. What her name? I think that's her name. Ariel. Ariel is like a like an angel or something like that, right? Um, like I, you can see her face, but I think most of these characters have faces. Uh, you, they just don't show them. Whatever. Um, she's a healer, and uh, straight off the bat, bro, like I'm, I, I won't really suggest her to anybody. Uh, because Ariel, like you can get better value out of uh. Anna than with Ariel with Ariel. Uh Ariel like for her stuns, um somebody have to be to uh near a wall for you to like stun them. Um Anna, for example, like somebody don't have to be near a wall for you to stun them. You just have to be able to land your skill shot to stun them. Um so Ariel heals depends on like her allies doing like damage and stuff because she needs energy from her allies. It's like it's just way too much stuff. Like she's way too team dependent, right? Um, Ariel and like people in a combo with uh, Chogol is is a it's a normal thing uh, because Chogol is like an aggro character to play. Um, and if you are playing like an aggro character like Chogol or Virian, for example, or like uh, Grimmy, well, Grimmy is very squish. I'm not gonna lie, he don't have life steal or whatever. Uh, people like like Illidan, uh, Diablo, like people that can get in there and get dirty. Um, if you are playing them with Ariel, Ariel, whatever her name is, uh, she can be useful. But apart from that, bro, like if you were, if you guys were running away from the, the enemies or whatever, and she already used like her slot bag ability, um, that's the only thing she had pretty much. Um, and like the swoop thing, 
like it's it's really hard to like get value out of her. Um, doing team fights, she really don't pro contribute that much damage. Like, I don't I don't know. Like I think she's generic. She's not going to be tier. Um, in fact, because I'm I can't recommend her to like new players or whatever. Actually, she's not gonna go in C tier because like this mean like she's actually valuable. She's gonna be in a she's gonna go in the generic tier. Uh, we have Asmodan here. Asmodan is a uh, it's a beast. I'm not gonna lie. He's like one of the best character in the entire game. Um, he's a global ca character like apart from like the mobility, like he has um, abilities that can actually contributes towards other parts of the map um he can drop his demons around the map and stuff like that and uh a lot of players don't know how to build asmodan properly and a lot of players don't know how to play asmodan properly um if you are going quest build on uh, asmodan uh first tier the best way to do it is to uh, pick your quest tell your allies that you're going to be doing a quest and you want to stack up a little bit and when you do that right tell them as well to like maybe pick up on your lane early on if they want to lane early right and your tank should actually like try to like do a lot of team fight early on right uh where like the enemies don't have that much abilities to like use and like kill you guys and, and stuff like that right and you want to use that opportunity to like stack up on your abilities and apart from like stacking up like you can use your ability nothing is stopping you from like actually attacking the enemy structure right you can use your ability to like hit structures, um, hit those turrets early on, just do a little bit of damage on it and stuff like that, right? So I don't see Asmodan players doing it, even though there are like a lot of Asmodan player. Um, however, like even in a noob hand, Asmodan is a bit of a trouble, right? Uh, because of this, I'm gonna put him S tier um, because he's he, like. He's good even if you don't know how to play him, and he's even better if you know how to play him. And his dunk later on in the game, like when you have all your stack and stuff, like he can one shot people. Like and his AOE, like the the AOE is like so big, <laughs> like it's like so hard for you to avoid that stuff, right? And he can just go whoop, just end one on you, right? <laughs> and it doesn't matter how far you are, dude. Like if he can like actually aim that stuff, he's gonna take you out. It doesn't matter how far you are. And it's it's really crazy, like the amount of damage and siege and everything that he can bring to the table. Um, a lot of people like um, actually feel happy when they have him in Aram because it's really hard to win against Asmodee in Aram because he's like pretty much like the best siege character in the entire game. Um, anyways, we we will go we'll come across some other siege characters that can actually make Asmodee uh, run for his money and stuff like that. So. And your boy Blaze, right? Blaze is is on the table now. Uh, Blaze is a, a flame uh, elemental damage type of character. Um, he has life steals. One of those characters that depends on life steals uh, to actually be useful in team fights. His ultimate is, is garbage, in my opinion. Um, in the like lower tier, like lower. Um, like you can play him master level and all that stuff, but still though, his ultimate is still garbage in my opinion. Like he has ones that like when you charge it up, you like move really slowly and you go into an enemy and like put poison damage, continuous damage onto them. Um, and then the other one is like a bunker. Uh, it's it's a bunker, right? They call it bunker. <laughs> he put it down and everybody can go into it and like shoot flames out of the bunker and stuff. And in my opinion, like when he does that, like all you have to do is like surround surround that stuff. Like basically it's like a coffin, pretty much. <laughs> like if you use that and like everybody go inside, it's like a coffin in my opinion. And you guys can just wait, wait for them to like run out of like steam or whatever. And as soon as they better to uh, get out of that um, bunker, you guys can just pick them up one at a time. Um, I think his ultimate is basically like a like a lifesaver type of thing like basically like if you are taking a lot of damage you are like 20 hit point you can jump into the bunker and then come out and attack and then jump back in and then come out and attack and jump back in and stuff like that but i don't i don't see a lot of people who actually make use out of it like in lower tiers like 
in lower tiers you like drop your, your bunker down and people will, like walk around that stuff <laughs> like people will not take any value out of it like they will not see the importance of your bunker um and it's it's just like and if you use the other ultimate like people can just walk away from you right um and sometimes it doesn't really do that much damage right um or the damage that it does people can just heal it up um heal it right like it's a continuous damage type of thing like uh or that damage over time and people can just heal that stuff right uh cleanse it um in a sense because of that i'm gonna take him and uh pull him here um blaze is more like a bruiser than a tank uh that's how a lot of people play him they play as a bruiser even though he's a tank uh by role they play as a bruiser the fact that he's a tank but people plays him as a bruiser kind of devalues him in my opinion and actually uh makes him an a tier character uh we have bright wayne bright wayne is automatically an s tier um anybody can pick up bright wayne and like get value out of her um the fact that you don't have to like aim your heels you just have to be around the fact that she can fly anywhere and like save anybody if you know how to play her as a risky in a risky way uh, because you know you can just fly somewhere and like uh get yourself killed if you don't know what you're doing uh, but Bright Wayne, like if you know how to play her, you know your race versus reward type of thing. Uh, that's one of the most important thing about Bright Wayne. Um, it it kind of like separate separate the advanced Bright Wayne players from the non advanced Bright Wayne player. Um, knowing when to like fly towards towards somebody to save them and like all that stuff, right? Uh, she got pull him off. She can basically take a character out of a match and the cooldown on that stuff is like super low so she can like do this multiple times in a single team fight and she brings a, a lot of a lot of stuff to the table like her heels is, is insane she also brings stealth to the table if you build her right um bright wing is just she got cleans as well it's in movement speed like she's crazy like that's why a lot of people ban her right um even in like the higher elo like where like you you have to like like even in higher elos, right? People still fear Brewing, um, so that's why she's gonna be up here. I don't have much to say about her. Like, just by playing her or just picking her and stuff, you actually know how important she is, how insane she is, or it is. Um, so that's that. Uh, Cassia, Cassia is on I don't know, Amazonia or whatever. Um, I don't know where she's from. <laughs> uh i don't know if she's like from diablo or something she's probably from diablo i don't know but anyways cassia is uh it's a warrior a female warrior um her skins are really nice i'm not gonna lie she looks like wonder woman or something uh she's her, her overall theme is is really strong i mean it's really decent uh so yeah cassia she brings blind to blind to the table she has her own lifestyle uh she can do a decent amount of damage in aoe her ultimate is also really decent like both of her ultimates are, are really good um she basically has a choke ultimate along with her, with her own ultimate um learning her you can get a lot of value out of her however uh i don't know team fights what's her ability in team fight all right, her ultimate in team fight. Um, I don't know. Is it strong? Yeah, her team fight ultimate is really strong. Like in higher elo and in lower elo, I'm gonna recommend her because I think she's a really good character. Not a lot of people play her. Um, she's like a sleeper, a sleeper character. Like one of those characters that is really good, but not a lot of people know how to play her or play her um, or see the value in playing her. Um, I'm gonna put her in A tier, uh, just because not a lot of people know how to play her, and not a lot of people uh, play her in the first place. Uh, so the builds that you're gonna see out there might not work in your in your favor, and it's gonna be a bit difficult to find somebody to like watch or learn from, um, on like most of these characters up here. So I'm gonna put her up here. Chen. <clears throat> Chen is a very, very decent character. Uh, not a lot of people play him. He's a sleeper as well. 
Um, but Chen is, is like Artenis. He's all about that shield life. And he's all about that, like, jumping into people and, like, just bringing chaos to the table. Like, when I play Chen, I go for the barrel. And I think the barrel is, is the most important uh, ultimate on Chen. Um, I've played Chen for a long time. And he's, like, my favorite bruiser um, bruiser to play um, in eSport and out of eSport. Like, I, I play him on a regular. Um, yeah, so... I'm gonna take Chan and uh, Sally. I'm gonna put him in. Uh, I'm gonna put him A tier uh, because, again, there are other other uh, bruisers that you can get a lot of value out of out of, and there are other bruisers that you can play, and like, be useful with, and like, Chan is a lot. It's a very difficult difficult character to play. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you have to build him right in the first place, and you have to know how that build works in a playstyle type of uh, sense, whatever. And you have to know when to engage, when to disengage, doing team fights, who you are supposed to be protecting, right? Um, Chen is a is a protective character. When I build him the way I build him, um, I build him towards like just protecting my DPS and like. I'm going to engage on the enemies when I know that they are weakening, like they want to they want to leave or whatever. I'm going to engage onto them and like harass them and stuff. Um, but I'm also going to keep track of my allies and make sure that they are alive and they are, they are safe and stuff like that. And like knowing how to do that is actually difficult in itself. Uh, so that's why like <laughs> I won't really recommend Chen, even though like he's my he's my favorite character of all, of all time. Um, yeah, so he's gonna be in A tier. Uh, in solo queue, you can, you can, I think you can carry in solo queue. Like I have played Chen, I played Chen as a tank, and I play him as a bruiser. I play him as an assassin. Like he's really, he's like vers, he's very versatile. Like um, he's a really decent character. So yeah, all right, we have a uh, Chogol here. Uh, Cho and Go, I think I will just wreck rank them the same time. Um, Cho and Go are going to actually go here. Uh, actually, actually here. Um, right here. Uh, Cho Go is a very difficult character to play because you need allies who on, um, who can be useful independently from you um, because like this is two character in one two players in one character right so that means like two lanes um, free pretty much like two objectives I mean uh, two opportunities right in one character right um, he's like like Arbiter, for example, right? Like if you have characters that know how to push, that know how to lane, right? Um, it, it, they bring really, they can make life really difficult for Arbiter. Um, and if you have global characters like, uh, I call it Fastad, right? This guy who can like fly all over the map. Where is he? Uh, Fastad, Fastad, where, where is this guy? There he is with his tattoo on his head. <laughs> Right, if you have characters like that, it makes life difficult for this guy because they can fly over to him and like kill him. Um, and some characters, right, can make life very difficult for for um, for Arbiter. Uh, so, yeah, so that's that's the type of thing I'm talking about, right? Um, Diablo, for example, I'm not gonna say what you can do with Diablo to like actually make life difficult for Arbiter, but you guys know, like, if you if you play this game for a while you actually know what it is right with these characters and how they can make life hell for arbiter um it's the same thing for this guy right if you have percentage damage dealers if you have percentage damage dealers right you can really mess up uh this guy day uh because like he's that character that really depends on his ally being as good as he is in order for him to survive um, like you can have like a bronze five in the uh, in gold or whatever in Cho or whatever, and you have you can have like a gold player in the in the controlling character, and you can come out pretty well. Um, 
but it, then again like it all depends on your team um, by picking this guy in, in solo queue usually people get tilted um, and it's like it's really difficult like you need a five man to execute this guy properly uh, so he's gonna be here and we're gonna move on to something else uh, we have Chromie. Chromie is a squish character she been rework a lot like this this is one of the reason why I actually changed my characters um, characters that I actually play as uh, because like like people like Chromie are really light um she was really really like decent to play in the past but it like they re they reworked her like so many times like like sonia for example like so many reworks like like these are the type of characters that have been reworked like so much like you, you actually just gave up right um because like so many changes like every single time um chromie is a really decent character though in solo queue uh i think chromie can like do camps on her own uh, she just have that much decent damage with her AOE and stuff like that. And doing team fights, she she can be really useful. Um, but there are some characters that can really give hell to Krumi. And uh, some characters, people like Nova, that can really give hell to Krumi. Um, because of this, like, if you learn Krumi, you always have to be on top of your game and, like, your win your win chance i don't know does it depends on your allies i mean you are dps so you are going to be influential to most of team fights and you can do us an insane amount of siege damage i'm going to put her in s tier because like if you know how to position properly you know how to like build her properly and you know how to play and you know how the game works like you can really get a lot of value out of her uh, because she can contribute towards team fights siege getting camps and, and stuff like that um, if you play her well and yeah so i'm gonna put her in s tier and honestly it's not really that hard to learn how to play chromie like any other range character it's not that hard to play range character stay back and just peel that's the that, i think that's like the main thing when it comes to us playing range characters stay back and peel uh we have Deathwing here Deathwing is a very fun character she's a dragon <laughs> even though she's like a like a lolly uh she's a dragon a lolly dragon if you know what i'm saying boy uh anyways uh we have definitely here definitely is a dragon an actual dragon <laughs> and uh he's a chaotic uh dragon uh if you're in a dnd type of thing um He's very impactful uh, with like global stuff, like doing, uh, putting pressure on the maps. He's very uh, influential in that sense. Uh, he does a lot of damage, like, like he, he does an insane amount of damage. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, like this guy is so annoying, right? Like he can just like put his lava down and like start breathing fire all over your allies. Like he's so crazy, and he, had, and he also got stunned, and his hit point is like so huge. Like you need some some percentage damage people to go against this guy to like actually win. Um, learning him is not it's not that bad. Um, he's very viable. I'm not gonna lie, he's viable in a lot of maps, and uh, maps where like you you have to individually like sky as a sky tempo or whatever. Um, like where you actually have to like individually hold a point like people um maps like uh tower of doom and stuff like that but you have to like individually hold a point right he can be very annoying to get to go against um because of that i think learning him is not that bad and you can get some value out of him um does he come with a lot of characters i think so can you get camps with him yes you can um I don't know like he can interrupt objective like if people are trying to cap objective he can interrupt it and stuff like that i'm gonna put in s tier because he's definitely like if you put in the time and effort like it will actually be fun for you to play him and like learn him all that stuff so just because like he's like a, a well well-rounded character i'm gonna put him in s tier um uh, we have deckard deckard is a healer uh he has insane heals like Deckard can like can take a guy from like one hit point to like 100 like in one second 
Um, that guy is like, it's really, it's really, he's a really decent character. I'm going to put him in S tier too. Um, you need to know how to position yourself and that's all. That's all there is to the to decker. Um, he's a bit boring though, because like you just go around dropping pots and stuff and like tossing out your cube. I don't think he's that boring, but a lot of people don't play him for some reason. The fact that he's like so good is why he's boring, right? He's like, he just, he just has everything. So I guess people want a little bit of challenge or whatever. Um, so that's why they don't play him that much. But Deckard is an S tier character because he's just that good. He got stun. He got like slows. He got uh, like a, a big stun. Like apart from like the the cube thing that he be tossing around, like his ultimate is like a big stun. So he got setups right. Uh, so that's why he's an S tier. Uh, we have your boy uh, Dahaka. The Haka here is from uh, StarCraft, whatever. Um, this dude is a jungler. Um, if there was like ever a jungler like in Hero of the Storm, uh, this would be one of the junglers. Um, he likes to, to go in the brushes and like he's a global character. He's all over the map most of the time. If you play him right, you, you're going to be like all over the map for the most part. And his lane pressure is insane. Uh, his healing is insane. He can heal himself. Um, and then he can like... He can do decent setups if you know how to land your tongue. Your tongue, um, you can also blind people as well, and uh, he's a really, really strong character. Like the Haga, like if you want to learn him, uh, go ahead and do so. Um, and you can actually climb really fast if you learn him, because most of the time, like in lower elo, it's all about like getting SP and like just pushing on the maps. And if you are a new character and you learn this guy, I mean, if you are a new player and you learn this character, like you can get a lot of value out of him. Because of that, I'm gonna put him on the uh, S tier. Um, yeah, um, he's one of the best bruisers in a sense. Uh, we have uh, Diablo here. Diablo is from Diablo. That's why they name him Diablo, anyways. <laughs> I don't know about Diablo players, but anyways, uh, Diablo is a really decent character. Uh, in my opinion, he's the best tank in the game. Uh, so he's automatically going to go in S tier. Uh, he's the best tank because like he has very few abilities um, and they are not that hard to learn. Like Diablo, when you play him, you always need to have your peripheral open. Like I don't mean like physically around you. I mean like in a game, like when you are moving straight, you want to know like if there's a character on the left of you and on the right of you. And if so, how are you going to be able to like land your stun onto them and like just keep track of those players in a map? I'm in a match, right? Like if I'm playing Diablo, I'm smacking a guy in front of me, right? I'm smacking a guy in front of me, but I'm actually looking at a guy behind that guy and stuff like that, right? So usually when you play Diablo, like the tank want to get into your face because... They don't want their allies to get smashed on the wall and make like a mirror or whatever. Um, so most of the time, people will try to like avoid you when you're playing Diablo. But you can actually use that to an, event, to an advantage by like looking for angles. Like when I was in eSport, they, they used to be like, Diablo is looking for an angle. Diablo is looking. Yeah, that's, that's me, bro. Like you can just like walk around like casually as if nothing is about to happen. And now, boom, smack onto somebody and like flip them over and stuff like that. Like. Diablo is like so insane, like he's really scary. Um, in higher in higher elos, like they usually ban him. So, yeah. So if you learn him right, you can actually get a lot of value out of him because like he's one of those ta those tanks that players actually fear, and it's like so hard for him to kill for them to kill him because his hit point is like really big. And uh, if you go globes, right, you can actually like heal yourself from like zero to one hundred um, just by picking globes and like. And the healing fountain and stuff. Anyways, Diablo is S tier. I don't even have to explain why he's S tier. So, um, Diva, Diva is a bruiser. Um, uh, she been she one of those characters that been reworked, like rework, 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 like every single time like a rework come out, Diva is in it. Um, but she's still strong though. Like she went from like having like a a mech dependent like type of gameplay to like like herself being like the strongest of the two, right? Um, she likes, she has a mech, 
you can get out of the mech and stuff like that um if you take a lot of damage uh but diva like apart from her max now like diva herself i think diva herself does a lot more damage than her mech um so <laughs> that's that like you want to use your mech as a shield thing uh but yourself you should just know that yourself if you build yourself properly if you build the character properly uh you yourself can be doing a, a, an insane amount of damage uh i think diva is one of those characters that people fear uh she she takes a lot of damage really fast these days like she's not that tanky um and sometimes like players play her and they don't know which what the abilities does like some of the abilities that they are picking they don't know what it does like, it's really hard to build her so i'm gonna put her in a tier honestly um she can get camps and all that stuff but well not that's not a big deal like there are so many characters that can get camps and stuff uh, we have ETC. ETC is gonna go in S tier, uh, because like he's like he counters some heroes. Um, his ultimate is can get countered too, but um, ETC got his own stun. Like in a cooldown on his stun is like it's not that high at all. So basically, like like this character that can pull people out of team fights a lot. Like ETC got an insane amount of, of stuns that he can put out a lot, right, and stun people um very often and you can get a lot of picks because of that so he's gonna get an s tier and he's one of those characters that is not hard to learn um and he's just really fun like <laughs> let's roll baby like <laughs> stuff like that like it is really it's really cool his character designs st and stuff like that so he's gonna be in s tier and we have your boy fast tire it's a global character fast tire is a it's a sleeper um this guy has the potential to like change an entire match by himself right the, the, the overall outcome of a match he can change it by himself um there, there are certain maps that you have to like capture objectives and like if you build him properly you can basically deny people objectives and like you can interrupt objectives and stuff like that and uh and you can be all over the map at the same time and he's a range character and you guys know range characters are like they always have advantage in team fights and stuff like that right so i'm gonna put him in s tier because he's not that hard to learn um and if you learn he you can get a lot of value out of it uh so yeah uh we have your boy a protoss here um phoenix uh phoenix is a very difficult character to play um uh, he has shield but his shoe is not that mu that much to like melt down, and when you get that shoe down, he's very squishy. Um, he has an ultimate that does insane damage, but it requires his team to like come properly. Uh, you need to be like in a five man, like get a decent stun or whatever, or like get them in like a narrow path for you to like beam them up, uh, lit them up. <laughs> um, he also has another um, ultimate that like targets people and like did 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 like that, like machine gun whatever. Um, but I don't know he got slows and he got some damage but it's just so much finger work like when you're playing Phoenix like you have to like be like so fast like with your fingers and stuff like he's, he's like Abitur for example he's, like so much fingers finger works uh, because of that I'm gonna put him in A tier um, he's a bit difficult to learn uh, because he has like one escape and stuff like that and uh, He's just Phoenix. I'm not gonna lie. He's not, he's not he's not really that important, honestly. You can you can get value out of other characters, um, in a in a brief amount of time of uh, learning. So, we have your boy, uh, how you call him? Your boy, uh, how you call this guy? This guy is uh, Garage. Garage is a. Uh, orc he's an orc you got your, you got your boy orc here orcish dude and uh he's from world of warcraft obviously um he's a tough guy you can you can tell from his baldness he's a tough guy and he looks like a bull like with his nose ring or whatever he's a tough guy um he's like a counter to diablo in my opinion um he's not a counter to this guy though but uh yeah, he's a counter to Diablo in my opinion, and uh, I don't know. I don't think he's a counter to Joanna. I think Joanna counters him, 
and uh, and Morad encounters him as well. Where is Morad? He's a counter to Stitches, obviously, but not to Moradin or to Johanna uh, or to this guy, ETC. Um, anyways, but Diablo is really hard to counter. I'm not going to lie, though, uh, but there are some people that counter this guy. This is, what, this is really cool. This is the only coolest thing about Hero of the Storm, though. Like, you have one character and you have, like, three different counters towards that character, unlike in most uh, auto games where, like, it's really hard for you to counter a character. Like every single character in this game has their own counter, uh, counter picks. So very, um, he's gonna be in S tier though because he can toss people around. He can stun people. Uh, his his sustain is really insane. He has his own life steal, and he can like he can like taunt people and stuff like that. Um, his taunt build is really decent. Uh, I don't really use the taunt build, but. His stun build is really, really decent for picks. I'm not going to lie. I think it's like the best build. Uh, but because I don't play him that much, I don't use that build. I actually use like the swipe for like healing and stuff. Uh, but he, I think his stun build is the best. Uh, we have your boy here. Uh, uh, Goblin. The Goblin dude called um, Gaslow. Gaslow is from World of Warcraft. He's obviously going to be S tier. Um, he's a sleeper though, like not a lot of people want to play him because like they think he's nerfed. Gaslu is not nerfed at all. Like you just need to build him properly and he's a bruiser, he's a melee character. So when you are playing him, do not zone out. Um, do not get tunnel vision pretty much. Like sometimes people playing Gaslu and doing a mid in the middle of a fight, they don't really know where, the where Gaslu is, where their character is. And they just die like that because... Gaslow is like a he's like a tiny uh, goblin guy like in the middle of a fight. Um, you need to keep track of yourself, right? And don't lose yourself in a fight, right? So um, yeah, if you learn that though, like Gaslow is is really useful. Um, he can get cams. He can get that huge stun on the enemies. Like you guys actually have, I'm sure you guys have seen like uh, montages of Gaslow ultimate and stuff, like a uh, compilation videos. Uh, of guys who are just stoning everybody and just destroying them with like one hit or whatever like it's insane bro like gaslow is like so decent um if there was like an extra tier tier above here um he would actually be in that tier um i played gaslow as a tank before believe it or not uh most of my most of my bruisers that i play i usually sometimes play um play them as a tank uh so <laughs> yeah gaslow is really good uh, i'm not gonna lie here Anyways, uh, we have uh, Genji. Genji is from uh, uh God, I forgot his this thing name. Anyways, Genji here is a ninja assassin. Uh, he can go in and out of fights. Uh, I'm gonna put him B tier. I'm gonna say he's generic uh, because Genji like he got one job and that's the only thing that he does good. I mean, he doesn't do it that good, anyways. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's he's that like useful in team fights, like in lower Q and in higher elos. Uh, Genji is an assassin. He can go in, zoop, come out, zoop. If you are going against a lot of squishies, if you are going against like a lot of squishies, you can go against them with Genji. Uh, but he doesn't get camps. He don't know how to do that. If you don't know how to play him good, like. If you can play him persistently and you can play him good at a really, really high performing value um, level, like consistently, um, you don't get enough value out of him. Uh, so I really want like put him here, right? Um, I think it's not that hard to kill. Uh, he's like any other range character. The only difference is that he can travel long distance, the, those distances really fast. And uh, he can be really, really annoying. I know another annoying character um, in this game. Uh, I mean, in this list right now that we'll come across. Um, anyways, I don't think he's worth the hustle, the struggle. Um, and also, if you don't want to, if you want to tilt your team, you should pick this guy in lower elos um, because it's, it's a really quick way to tilt everybody. Uh, because he's just one of those characters that don't bring value. Um, especially if you are lower tier and you have lower experience um, with Fear of the Storm. We have your boy Grammy here. 
Grammy in the in like anybody hand, Grammy is useful. You just need a basic understanding of what your character is supposed to be doing, and that is the camps. If you can do Grammy, if you can get camps with Grammy and you know when to get camps, you'll find yourself winning like almost every single match you enter in. Uh, my Grammy is like sixty percent win rate with like over uh, three hundred matches. Uh, I don't play him that much because he get bans a lot, like in higher elos. Uh, but Grammy is just, I think he's like the best, the best range character in the entire game, like physical DPS range character in the entire game. Uh, Limi is 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 Limi and Kitty uh, are in competition. I mean Limi and Jaina, like most of these mages are really decent. Uh, but I don't I don't think Grammy is like above tier above these mages. Uh, but Grimmy is like up there, right? Um, he's really, really useful. Like you can get camps with him. I don't know. I think in my opinion, he's like my favorite. So he's like my my best range character um, in the entire game. I don't know about you guys, um, but there are other range characters that are really, really useful in team fights and stuff like that. We have your boy Golden here, uh, and also there are a lot of guys on Grimmy out there that you can learn. Uh, so. We have your boy Golden. Golden is a mage. Uh, he has life drain. Like if you know how to build him for life drain, you can be super annoying to people and super tanky. It's like almost impossible to kill him if you build him right and play him properly. Um, I think he's worth the struggle to learn. I'm gonna put him in A tier um, because like it's really hard for you to find somebody that know how to play him and how to build him properly. But if you learn him, you can actually get some decent value out of him. Uh, but he's not like always useful. So I'm not going to play him S tier. And like not anybody can just pick him up and play him properly. So I'm going to play him A tier. Uh, who else? Hanzo. Hanzo is. Uh... Hanzo, 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 Hanzo. Uh, he's a really, really decent character. He's a range. He's an archer. Um, he's a range character, archer uh, character. Uh, he's from the same uh, game as Genji, and uh, his portrait is really nice. I actually have him as my portrait uh, on my portrait. Uh, his photo on my portrait. Uh, his voice line are pretty decent. His ultimate is is quite nasty, um, but you need to know when to use his ultimate. Right, his ultimate is really, really good, but you just need to know when to use it. Um, even the water dragon, like the dragon, um, they want like the bigger AOE um, ultimate. Like a lot of people don't pick it, but I think it's really useful. Um, and then there's one that actually stuns everybody. Um, I've seen that. I mean, I've my one of my allies in an esport event uh, actually used that to like we actually wipe an entire team with his ultimate before. Uh, he's really good in higher elo. Um, he's not that easy to play though, so I'm gonna point me here uh, because like he been reworked um, earlier. He used to like get camps and like it's, it was really easy to play him and stuff. Um, but now like you have to be like actually dedicated to watch him. You have to be passionate about him um, to actually know how to play him and get value out of him. Um, these are like higher elo characters that you want to play. And these are like characters that are really easy to lose match with uh, because of your team and stuff like that. And apart from the challenge of playing them yourself and stuff like that. So he's going to go in. Uh, actually, he's not that useful as compared to uh, these guys. Actually, he is useful. I'm going to put him here. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but he's a bit easier to play because... Yeah, so because he's a bit easier to play in comparison to all of these characters, I'm going to put him in C tier. Uh, we have your boy, uh, Hogger. Hogger from World of Warcraft. He's one of those guys, one of those characters that can actually one-shot you if you're on a gear and attack them, like in an MMO, right? Um, anyways, Hogger is a bruiser. Um, he's a melee uh, DPS, um, and he's very annoying. Uh, not a lot of people play him. He's like a sleeper, pretty much. Like, not a lot of people play him. 
and I really won't recommend him because like I don't know like he can actually 1v1 bosses and actually win like if you know how to play me you play as a at a higher level right you can you can be super useful you can like slap people around like uh like how you call her you real like you can slap people around like that um at that level but um it really really requires you to like dedicate yourself to him um and he's really hard like he's i'm not gonna lie like he's really hard you need to know your geometry and like you need to know like his abilities and like how to build him and all that stuff um so because of that i'm gonna put him in d tier um if you learn him though like he's insane right uh because he can like 1v1 bosses and like he can like do so many stuff that uh that is deserving of this level his skill cap uh we have uh we have uh illidan here illidan is a uh, world of warcraft character he's like my favorite uh mmo character <laughs> when it comes to like lore well not 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 like to lore like uh when it comes to like design like illidan is a lifesteal type of character uh he's an assassin and I, every single mmo i play or every single game that i play for the most part I like playing as an assassin, as a stealthy assassin or whatever. And I don't know, I don't think he has stealth though, but anyways, um, I think he has stealth, like in, in World of Warcraft, um, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, in Hero of the Stone, he don't have stealth. Um, anyways, he has a really decent uh, ultimate, you will not prepare and stuff like that. Um, Illidan works well with like people like these and in higher elo, you can get a lot of value out of him. Um, if he doesn't get countered, uh, if he doesn't get countered by these people, like, uh, sometimes Nova can be, can be a headache to Illidan, I'm not gonna lie. Like, she can, like, snap the shit out of him. Um, anyways, uh, Illidan is a decent character, not a lot of people play him, and, uh, he's, he, I don't think he's that hard to play, but it's really easy for you to dive towards your dome. Like, it's really easy for you to kill yourself and feed. Uh, so, I'm going to put him here. Uh, in C tier. Uh, it's really easy to climb with Illidan in lower elos. Uh, he's a lifesteal character, obviously. So, in lower elos, a lot of time people would think, like, they can kill you because your hit point is lower than them. Um, just because of that, right, it's why uh, Illidan is one of, uh, it's one of those characters that you can really, like, just pick people off with because... They think they can kill you, but while you're attacking them and stuff like that, you're actually healing yourself. And it's, like, easy for you to kill them. So, uh, speaking about people that you really can't underestimate, your boy Imperius. When Imperius came out, like, I played him, and then I stopped playing him. And then as soon as I stopped playing him, like, I saw, like, a lot of people started to play him. And I was like, what did I miss? And then I went and started watching streams, and I saw, like, some insane setups. Um... And like so difficult to kill like he reworked right um it made him so like insanely like powerful and stuff like that and um imperials i think uh he's an a tier character um again you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort to know how to play him um uh, and some some of the other bruiser you can get a lot of value out of and uh you know what? I'm I'm gonna leave him in A tier because he's not. You don't have that much guide on him, um, and he's not like. He's not beginner friendly. And. Uh, and, because he's like Arthas, like you have to like walk around to you have to like walk towards your enemy and stuff like that. Um, it easy. It's easy for him to get poked down. And uh, he has this ability that can actually be used as an engage and a disengage. Um, and if you don't know how to use it, it's kind of like Illidan. If you like, well, Illidan actually have multiple ways to like disengage, um, depending on the build. Uh, I'm just gonna put him A tier because is he worth it? Like, is he is he worth like the struggle to learn? I think so, but. I don't know. It's I don't think a lot of people are gonna do it because he's like so generic. Um, yeah. Hmm. 
I don't know situation wise like the maps and stuff like that I think uh, he doesn't have that much advantage in maps um, again like it all depends on the player right um, in higher elo like you know what I'm gonna put him here because like not a lot of people will pick him up and know how to play him but if he's in the right hand he can actually be very very useful to team fights and stuff but again, like you really have to be dedicated to playing Pyros to know how to play him properly. So I'm gonna play him D tier. Uh we have we have uh Jaina. Jaina is gonna be in S tier. She can get a cam, she got shoes, she got slow, she got a, a nasty ultimate. And like she's one of those generic character that you get. She's a new cannon, right? This, this she's meant to take you out of uh, out of bronze five. She's meant to help you climb. She's meant for you to win team fights with. She's meant for you to solo queue with, right? This is her. So she's gonna be in S tier. Uh, Jaina, Jaina is gonna be uh, S tier. Anybody can pick Jaina up, and I mean Johanna up, and know how to play her. Uh, she got blind. She has a nice ultimate that can be can be used for engage and disengage, and uh, she's almost unkillable. Like she got shields upon shields if you build her right. She got heals upon heals if you build her right, and she got slow. She got almost everything. Like she can group people up for Chromie to like brush her down, for example. She can do a decent amount of setups, and she got armor. Like she's one of those. She actually is the character that have like the most defensive uh stats in my opinion in the entire game uh for a tank right she has really strong armor um i think in competition though, that will be etc and uh yeah and then garage um uh, so yeah so she's gonna be in s tier uh most of these tanks right a lot of people don't like playing tanks but surprisingly like you can actually climb by playing tanks um so yeah, so John Rai, John Rai is gonna be in S. Uh, no, not a lot of people know how to play John Rai. Um, because not a lot of people know how to play John Rai, I'm gonna put him in the in uh, not generic. He's not generic. Oh God, I'm gonna. He's not gonna be in B tier. He's gonna be in A tier. Um, John Rai is a character that he's not that hard to learn uh but he's and and he's like really really impactful like he's he's a sleeper right like most of these characters are sleepers characters like characters that are really good but not a lot of people play them because like they don't really like them in my opinion uh he's one of those characters um genre is really fun to play though um his wave clear is insane his dps output from safe location is insane his setups is also insane if you can plan your mines and like your traps and stuff like that if you can plan it properly um yeah john Ray is, is is almost s tier but like not a lot of people play him not a lot of people know how to build him uh but you can like watch a lot of uh youtube videos i think there are a lot of videos on on uh john Ray. kt is a sleeper these days um not a lot of people are playing kt the thing he's nerfed but he's not nerfed at all. Um, he's still S tier, in my opinion, personally. Um, so, uh, actually, you can get an insane amount of value from KT as in comparison to other mages. Uh, KT, KT. Not a lot of players know how to play KT, like in lower ELOs. Like, they just die. Like, they just stand still and, like, start attacking and just die. And that's the sad part about it. Yeah, because of that, I'm going to put in A tier. Um, like, you have to build him right. You do not go quest build with KT. Uh, because, like, the first, like, you don't go, like, that circular quest thing. You don't do it unless, like, you are playing Aram or whatever. Um, yeah, but his damage output is insane. Like, his team fight output is in, team fight damage output is insane. You can do camps with him. Like, he's insane. Like, you got stun and everything on KT. Um, so yeah, that's that. And you can like zoom people out pretty much. Anyways, I'm going to put in A tier though, because like he has a bad, uh, repetition. 
um, just by like people not knowing how to play him and people thinking that he's nerfed as well. And people just in over him. He's a sleeper these days. And then we have Kilfaz, uh, Kilfazar, whatever his name is. Uh, this is Kilfaz, this is Kilfazar. I want to put him in D tier. Kilfazar is a really, really difficult character to learn how to play. But if you learn him, you can do insane damage uh, doing team fights. You can do insane uh, picks and stuff like that. And he's like he's really decent to play. Uh, yeah, he's really difficult to play, so he's going to be in this tier. And if you know how to play him, though, if you master him, he can be very, very useful. So I'm going to put him in D tier. Carrigan. Carrigan is a melee DPS. Uh, she got insane shield. She got insane uh, uh, siege damage potential with her ultimate and stuff. Um, there's an ability that you can use that your ultimate can just keep rebirthing itself pretty much. <laughs> that shit is so annoying. Anyways, uh, she's a sleeper. And uh, you can get a lot of value out of other characters. I'm going to put her in C tier because I've seen her in higher elo and she's really good in higher elos where people know what to do because she got stun, she got pulls, she got lives, she got like insane uh, durability. Um, I'm going to put her in C tier though because like almost she's never played in like lower elos but in higher elos she's, she can be very useful. Uh, she can get camps, everything like she's, she's really useful. She's a sleeper, right? So um, yeah. That's that. Uh, Karazim. Uh, Karazim here. She's like Mafael, pretty much. Uh, Karazim is a healer. Very, very insanely uh, fun character to play. He's actually my favorite healer um, of all time. Well, not of all time. Lily, Lily is my favorite healer of all time. But uh, Karazim has actually found his way up in the ranks um, I'm gonna say he's uh... oh god I've seen some noobs actually do really well with Karazim I'm gonna put him A tier he's not that easy to play um, and he's not that easy to build a lot of people don't know how to build him uh, properly uh, but he's really useful and he's really really good uh, he got cleans, he got like DPS and all that stuff. A lot of people playing as a DPS character. Um, I don't play as a DPS, I play as a healing character and I, like as a support pretty much. Um, uh, is he easy to learn? He is in a sense, but just because of the fact that a lot of um, new players um, below like lower tier character um, players don't know how to position properly and you are playing a melee character, um, I think it's going to be difficult. So he's not being A tier. Uh, we have, uh, and also like you can get, you can get better value out of taking auto healers instead of taking Karazem uh, because he's not that healy, right? That's why I say a lot of people take him as a DPS character and it's very easy for you to like tilt your allies when you pick this character in lower elo. Because, like, you have to know where you are going, right? Um, and how your team is going to react when you're about to pick this character. Because it's really easy for you to tilt people by taking them. And if you don't play well, you also make it worse for your teams. Um, he can do camp, so he's not, like, depending on, like, his team for like for him to, like, snowball some winning potential. Uh, so he's going to be in A tier. Uh, Lucio is seen everywhere, and he's not that hard to play. It's really really easy to play so yeah he's a generic healer uh type of thing uh you gotta be closer to your ally Hugh is not that insane though he's it's not that insane um as i was saying uh so i mean you have to be closer to your allies to like heal them and all that stuff and sometimes like some sometimes you'll be healing your ally and it will get killed because your healing is not that much um, but he has a decent ultimate that can give people a massive amount of shield and like prolonged team fights and stuff. Um, so that's that. Also, it's really hard for you to kill Lucio and like Karazin, for example. Your boy Lyric. Lyric is a sleeper. 
Um, he's one of those characters that if you learn, you can really get a simple uh, value out of him. Um, I don't see him a lot in uh, in lower elos though, but in higher elo, he's like insanely viable, and a lot of people like to pick him to like counter some other bruisers and stuff like that. And his ultimates are, are all useful, honestly. Uh, you can like lock the enemy in place with like the tomb thing, and your rift work is like a life steal thing. You can just heal yourself back to maximum hit point. In lower elo though, a lot of Lurex tend to tend to feed. Uh, a lot of Lurex player tend to feed. Uh, so that's one of the stigma on a uh, Lurex. He's uh, he's a feeder, right? That's why I think he is. Um, if he's in the wrong hand, he usually just like go like 0 and 10 in matches, like just feeding, like because people think like he can re because he can like revive on the battlefield. Like a lot of people think his death is not that uh, meaningful, right? Uh, but they don't know that like he's going down like going on a on a thirty second cooldown can actually mean a lot uh, for the enemies to like go and get all camps and like do other stuff on the maps and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of lower tiers guys like because they don't really value his life, um, they don't use him properly. So he's gonna be in A tier. Uh, Limain though, Limain is a noob canner. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, or not. Not a lot of people play Lee Main, but when they do, like she's she can like snowball fights. Uh, she's really really good. I'm not gonna lie. In higher and lower elos, she can change the uh, the winning factor for team fights and stuff, and she's really good. Uh, Lily is gonna be in, surprisingly. Uh, Lily is gonna be in A tier surprisingly. Uh, she's supposed to be in S tier, but Lily is gonna be in A tier because a lot of new players play her as dps um i've seen a lot of dps lilies um that don't have any heals for their allies playing him like karazim they don't have any heals for the ally all they do is just do dps and allow the allies to die in lower elos and uh yeah lily is actually one of the strongest healing character in the entire game but a lot of people don't play her that way because she been reworking stuff like that and it's really a disadvantage um, in lower elo because people think uh, because there's DPS in there they have to use it. <sighs> so yeah, that's why she's in eighth here. Uh, Marlis, Marlis is gonna be generic. Uh, Marlis is a walking. <laughs> uh, she's a uh, I don't know, like she's. Oh my god. Like in lower elo, it's like so bad to have a Marlis on your team because like again, positioning is, is one of the hardest thing for lower elo players. And Marley is one of those healers that you have to know, you you got to know how to position yourself in order for you to, uh, for you to get value out of. I'm going to put it in D tier though, because um, I've seen, uh, I've actually played a Marley's comp uh, that can actually end team fire like in, uh, I mean, end of match in like 10 minutes, right? In like 15 minutes or 10 minutes like that, uh, you can actually end up match in that in higher elo. Uh, her ultimate is really nasty, right? You can just port to the enemy base, do your stuff and stuff like that, right? So anyways, you guys know how Marlis work uh, with uh, Tyrael and stuff like that. And uh, Sivanis, where, where is Sivanis? Sivanis, right? You know, like you can end a match like in 15 minutes or like in 10 minutes, it depends it's on your on your team pretty much. Uh, she gonna be in D tier though because she's like she's not that easy to play. Um, she's one of those characters that is like super team dependent. I'm not gonna lie, and uh, she don't do that much damage. She don't bring that much damage to the table. She bring a lot of heals and a lot of buffs. So. Uh, you want to work with her, like with people like Butcher and stuff, people like Greymane, Varen, uh, Sonya, whatever, Vala. Like you can work it like that, but you know it's it's not that easy. And you also don't come across Morales players in lower elo that easily. Lunara, Lunara been reworked, and uh, her rework has actually taken her from like potentially B tier into like A into S tier, uh, because like. Anywhere you pick Lunara, she actually fits. Uh, her poisonous damage from a long range is like insane. 
and it also got slows on it so basically you are just slowing everybody with no cost like no cooldown or whatever you can just slow people down and like just kill them her poke damage is just so insane she that's why she's above golden a little bit golden has something similar but she hers is like a cancer like she's cancerous right <laughs> so uh that's that we have uh uh, Medivh. Medivh is gonna go in B tier as a generic character that you um, you can get better value out of playing all of melee characters instead of playing her uh, just because of the fact that she's like so hard to play and even in higher elo like even if you like reach your skill cap um, in higher elo you still can't really be that useful I'm not gonna lie um, because she's just that difficult for like because she's my F like um, that's how it is like she she is who she is and uh you have to be passionate about her to like main her pretty much um i've played her a lot in casual matches and in ranked games and she can help tethering and like her ultimate she can really uh she can really do some stuff she can do some really decent setups that's what i mean uh but you know it's like extra stuff like she's a melee character you have to walk towards your enemies to do damage to them and uh if people know how to sidestep and all that stuff, like it's really hard for you to like do setups. And she's up, she's mainly like a setup character, uh, and she have like that swap thing that like stacks up as you do damage to people together. Uh, but in in real, you know real de uh, decent match like in higher elo where people know how to keep their distance from each other, um, like KT is the person who actually taught people how to keep distance apart. Right, if you're going against them with like my app, right, it's it's gonna be really difficult for you to engage onto people and like just kill them like that. And you have a guy, your boy Marganis. He's gonna go in B tier too. Um, you can get a lot of value out of playing auto tanks than playing Marganis. Uh, Marganis is uh, it's an aggro character. He's more like a bruiser, in my opinion, than a tank. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is, man. I'm gonna put him here because I don't think he's that tanky. Like he got like the armor and all that stuff, and like he's he can be like super uh, aggro in team fights and stuff. But you have to be like super dedicated to this guy. He's kind of like my F. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, he's he's pretty generic. Um, like these characters here, it doesn't mean that they are, they are like super bad, but it means that like. You can get value out of other things like picking other things and learning other things um, in a short time than you will actually do if you were to take these guys um, yeah i mean he's a very viable character though if you know how to play him uh he's a sporty character like people would like to show off those are the guys who will play this guy like they like to show off Anyways, uh, we have a healer here, uh, Medivh. I don't see him a lot in a uh, Malfurion. I don't see him a lot in a uh, lower elos though, and he's very viable in uh, in a uh, higher elo. But in lower elos, like you want to bring like roots and like you know, you can't get cams. Like you can't really do much with them. Um, you can try like in lower elos, but you really won't be viable uh yeah but in higher elos though like he can be super super use useful his skill cap is really high uh sometimes if you don't know how to actually if you don't know how to play him like your healing is going to be really really terrible uh, but he can put out some decent amount of heals i'm not gonna lie in higher elos with people who know how to play him um yeah uh my uh my fire my fire is gonna go here uh my fire is the, it's like a death whatever um he has a lot of life steal he can do like three v ones i'm not gonna lie like he can four v one you guys or five v one you guys um if you like group up and like get his rift thing on you guys with mark um he got insane heals potential but he's a sleeper like not a lot of people play him not a lot of people have the time to invest into him he's a cool character by design and stuff but um it is what it is man like illidan you know and stuff like that like it is what it is it's gonna be in c in c tier he's gonna be in c tier because like in higher elo he, he can be countered easily uh in higher elo like people know how to take him down and stuff like that so 
we have your boy uh, Medivh. Uh, Medivh is gonna go into the generic. Actually, no. He's gonna go into D tier. Um, he's one of those characters that it's not necessary for you to learn him. It's like super not necessary, super unnecessary for you to learn him, because he's just he's like so hard to play. He's like really really hard to play. And however, if you learn him though, like you can, you can get a lot of value out of team fights. Um, I don't think you can change like the outcome of a match. Uh, actually, you could, you could with his ultimate and stuff. But I don't know. He can be all over the map. He's a global character, and he actually has stacks that if he dies, he actually loses. And uh, he's really difficult. That's why I say he's difficult to learn and difficult to play consistently. Um, but if you play him in higher elo, you can get a lot of value of him. Um, Medivh, like sometimes you can put your portal down in lower elos and nobody will pick it up. I mean, nobody will use it. Um, he's absolutely useless in lower elo because like in lower elo, there are many factors that are, are, that are the higher value um, than in higher elos. In higher elo team fight are very useful in lower elos like pushing the maps and stuff like that um doing objectives and stuff like that are very useful in team fight medivh has insane potential he got shields he got like his ultimate can like pull him off people and stuff like that and he's really useful like if in the right hand right um and also giving vision to people um on the map right and stuff like that but it's really hard for you have to like be dedicated you have to be like a fanboy for my D, uh, medivh in order to like learn him and like stick with him and you can get value out of other characters instead of picking him uh mia or, or um automatically on s tier uh she's really useful everywhere in higher elo lower elo and in, anywhere you put her she's useful she got insane heals she got stuns she got slows blinds everything you you name it she got it uh, Mephisto. Mephisto is uh, a mage. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he make that difference in higher elo. I'm not gonna lie. He's a generic character. Uh, he has insane damage. He Again, you have to know how to position properly. You have to know when to engage and disengage. And uh, he's unnecessarily difficult to learn and stuff like that. So, And he, he's very team dependent, right? And also picking him most of the time gonna tilt your allies. I'm not gonna lie. So he's gonna he's just gonna be here. And the fact that his ultimate, like one of his ultimates is like so like it's like so uh cheap, right? Like you can ult and then everybody get hit even though you are not around them. It's like it's really cheap. That's why he's gonna be here. Uh we have Morada and Morada is gonna be in S tier. Oh boy. Let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, there you go. Yeah, there are so many characters in S tier here. Um, again, S tier is like characters that you can pick up and learn and actually get a lot of value out of. And the the uh, skill cap is is it is what it is, and it's like you can be at any level within the skill cap and still get value out of them. Um, the higher you go, the better, right? So that's that. D tier is like characters that are unnecessarily difficult to learn, and uh, but if you learn them like in higher elo they can get good decent value um not in lower elo though um s tier is basically characters that will work for lower elo and higher elo d tier is like characters that will only work in higher elo um and not like tilt people when you pick them and stuff like that and as you go down it is what it is and uh b tier like generic generic character that you really shouldn't really bother yourself on pretty much we have your boy Murky here. Uh, Murky is going to go in the C tier. Not a lot of people know how to play Murky. In higher elo, Murky is really hard to counter. Um, yeah, in higher elo, like this squishy guy is hard to counter. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. He's going to be here though because like lower elo guys don't know how to play him. And they, they don't want to play him in the first place. Uh, so, yeah. He's a sleeper. Right. Uh, I call Nazibo. Nazibo is gonna go in an uh, A tier. She's gonna go in. I mean, he's gonna go in A tier. Uh, because like you have to like stack him up. Um, he does insane damage. I'm not gonna lie. 
his team fight potential is really decent his uh, racing ability i mean potential is really decent um but the fact that like most nazebo players don't really know when to come to team fights and stuff like that uh lower elo guys um and it's just recently that actually people started playing nazebo like in the past i used to play nazebo i used to say this guy is op and stuff like that and nobody used to play him like nobody he was like a sleeper in the past but now like people are like rushing towards him it's kind of like silly now when i look at nazebo players Anyways, that's that's him here. Um, he's gonna be in A tier though. Nova, uh, Nova is gonna be in generic tier. Uh, she just she's just generic. I'm not gonna lie. Like you can get value out of other characters. The only reason why you pick Nova is like if you want to harass harass somebody. Like if you want to harass this guy, you want to harass uh, this this girl. Like if you want to harass right um or like people like this guy all right that's when you'll pick nova but apart from that like i don't know like nova is like so hard to play for like lower tier guys and like people don't pick her because like it's really hard like to play her and be useful uh so yeah i really won't recommend her and it's easy for you to tilt your ally when you take nova like she's a cool character i'm not gonna lie but like People are gonna get tilted when you pick her. Orphea, Orphea is like a sleeper. Uh, her burst damage is insane. Her life steal is insane. Uh, she don't she don't get play a lot in the lower tier though. I'm gonna put her in the uh, in A tier. I've seen Orphea players, and most of them are usually good. I'm not gonna lie, like most Orphea's players, um, in higher elo and in lower elo are decent players. Um, so. I'm gonna pour in A tier. Uh, Probius, Probius is a sleeper, um, and he's really hard to play. I'm gonna put Pro Probius in D tier. Probius doesn't have a counter. Uh, a lot of people don't like Probius, and a lot of people won't bother learning Probius. And Probius is un unnecessarily difficult to learn and like picks, and like it's really easy for you to tilt your allies in lower tier, in lower uh, elos by picking Probius. Um, I'm I'm like a Probius main pretty much. I'm like the, probably like the only Probius player in this game. <laughs> I know some of you guys are probably Probius player out there. Shout out to you guys. Uh, but you know a lot of people would, would like would like take Probius and like point you know in a worse tier is if there was a worse tier. Um, anyways, all of these tier tier lists are, are very useful, right? Um, actually, a lot of people put him in a generic tier. Um, but I think he's very useful in like higher elos, um, where people actually know how to play, um, and they have game sense and all that stuff. Um, he can he got on the scene like I've seen some Probia gameplay that will like wow you pretty much. That's what that's all I can say. Like Probia is insane. He doesn't have a counter. Like a lot of people think they can counter Probia. Probia does not have any counter. Like. And yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm like almost like an OTP here. Uh, talking about Probius, so uh, that's how it is. So we're gonna go to Quera. Quera is like in every single uh, Elo, and she's really good. Uh, she's one of those like she actually the best melee assassin. Uh, Elo then got taken out of the picture. So uh, yeah, Quera is one of the best melee assassin. This guy is a mid range assassin, not a melee all range. Uh, Ragnaros, Ragnaros is a bruiser. Uh, Ragnaros, I've seen every single tier, and every single tier he's very dominant. Uh, with his wave clear, and he's like his global wave uh, clear, and uh, just insane stuff. Like his his damage, his burst damage is really insane as well. Um, his ultimate can like interrupt. Uh, uh. I call it uh, objectives and his ultimate can also be used in team fights and stuff and it's really nasty um after arc pass you don't want to have this guy against you in after arc pass and stuff like that so or um uh, uh i forgot our map name anyways <laughs> uh rainer rainer is pretty good i've seen rainer in uh, every single tier but i've been seeing him uh a lot these days um, Rainer is not generic. Uh, you can get a lot of value out of Rainer. 
Um, he's really easy to play, learn and play. Um, I would recommend him uh, to anyone. Um, I don't know why he's here though. Why is he down here? Renner down, is down here because you need to know how to position yourself and you need to know how to get value out of your ultimates and stuff. And uh, he can he has an insane amount of siege. He has insane damage output. Um, he's S tier, but you know a lot of people don't play him, and he's like a sleeper. So he's gonna be in A tier. Uh, Rhaegar, where do I put Rhaegar? I wanna put Rhaegar in uh, in D tier. In lower elo, Rhaegar players don't know what to do. In higher elo, Rhaegar players are really insane um, to go against. Uh, it's, it's, he's actually one of these best uh, healers in higher tiers. Enough just for healing, uh, for like controlling team fights and stuff like that. He's really good. So I'm gonna put him here. Um, yeah, he got slows as well. And he's good with characters that are super aggro, like um, aggressive characters, like rate um, like this guy, uh, Varian, and like this guy, and like Thoral, for example. People that can like really like muscle their way through stuff. Um, I don't know about Sonya, but like people that kind of like need a little bit of heals, but it can be really really aggressive, and stuff like that. Right? Um, he's really good. Uh, Rexar. Rexar is one of those really, really difficult characters to play, unnecessarily difficult. But if you know them, like it's really hard for you to get. Um, I don't see, actually, it's hard for you to get counter as a Rexar player. Like I play Rexar um, at a at a really above average level. Um, he can get bosses. He can get camps easily. He can stun your your enemies. I mean his enemies and. Uh, yeah, he's, he's like really, really powerful in the right hand. Um, not a lot of people play him though. I'm going to put him here because he can get countered. Um, actually, he can get countered in the, in the sense that like he he has he has to multi tax which means he, he has to move around a bit slower um, than most of other players like in team fights, uh, which means that he can get out position uh, quite easily. And uh, that's why he's going to get dropped down. Um, yeah. Also, the bear can get killed. Uh, so when a bear get, gets killed, like, he himself, I don't think he has that much damage. And uh, a lot of people don't build him properly. And you need you need to know how to build him. You need to know how to position, position properly. And uh, he's a really strong character, though. Like, he's really, really strong. Like, all of these characters here are really, really strong. Very, very strong characters, but they have to be in the right hand. They have to be played well, and they have to be played, like, in higher elos, where other people know how to comp well with you. Uh, Semiro. Semiro is uh, it's an assassin, melee assassin. Uh, Sam is going to get put in D tier. He's a beast of a character, uh, but you need to know how to play him, and uh, and Sometimes if you pick him in lower elo, your allies will tilt and they will throw the match. Um, but in higher elo, like Sam, a decent Sam player can basically win the match by himself. Like a like like Arbiter, like a decent Sam player can like win the match by himself. I'm not gonna lie, like he's insane. Like you need to be like special in a sense. Like you need, like it's a certain type of mindset, a, a mind game. Every time you play Sam, it's a mind game, right? Uh, so. Yeah, that's same for you guys. Uh, we have a uh, hammer. Hammer is gonna go in this tier, in generic tier, uh, because she got in CNC. She got like a lot of stuff that she can do. But honestly, like you can get a lot of value out of other characters uh, instead of picking her. Um, if you're taking her, you want to have like two tanks pretty much, or you want to have like a beefy melee characters that will like pew for her like Im immediately as she once soon as she get focused and like. Just protect her as she's doing siege damage. Like I've tanked before, um, as I said earlier, and I was actually on my on my chin uh, for the most time uh, when I was going with like Saji Hammer and stuff, and I would tank for her, and like 
I would tank for like my entire team pretty much. I was like the only uh, melee character in there. And uh, yeah, she's a really good character though, but she's a sleeper and uh, she's unnecessarily difficult uh, for people to learn and like basically not needed. She's generic, All right? Uh, Sonia. Sonia is uh, gonna be in A tier. Uh, not a lot of people know how to play Sonia. Not a lot of uh, lower elo want to play Sonia. Uh, Sonia is very OP though. She been reworked like crazy. Like, if there was a tier list for like reworked characters, like she would be like at the very top, like the most re the most reworked character in the entire game. Um, she used to be my favorite uh, Bruiser. Um, but she got reworked like so much like I actually just gave up like I'm like, okay, you guys can have her now Like she has so many reworks honestly like just stop <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have your boy stitches here your fat boy stitches. He's really difficult to kill I'm not gonna lie. You also have lifesteal which make it even worse uh, I think I'm gonna put stitches in S tier though because uh I've seen a lot of stitches. Actually, I'm gonna put him A tier. Um, the only reason I'm gonna put him A tier is that he has his hook, his hook, which can which can really uh annoy annoy people. But the players that play him in lower tiers don't know how to land their hook. Um, if you know how to land your hook as a stitches, you can basically uh get insane amount of picks um picks every single match, like ten, five tanks picks um per match, pretty much. And uh, and Stitches Ultimate, right? Um, it's, it's also uh, one of the things that is really difficult for players to actually decide on. Do you go for Gorge or do you go for the Fart thingy? Um, that's that's one of the difficult things uh, when you're playing Stitches. One of the difficult decisions that you have to make. Um, I usually go for Gorge uh, because of the fact that just taking players out of fights is very uh, crucial. Just picking them out of fights is very uh, crucial. So. I usually go for gorge um, and stuff like that. So uh, let's do uh, Stukov. Stukov is, I've seen a lot in a uh, casual match, I mean, uh, lower elos these days. And uh, a lot of people are actually picking up Stukov, who will actually be a sleeper character, but he's not anymore because people have actually learned how to play him. And like uh, a lot of people just enjoy playing Stukov, so he's going to be in S tier. Uh, Sylvanas, uh, Sylvanas is gonna be in the, Sylvanas is really, really strong. Like, her DPS is insane. Um, I'm gonna put her in, in a A tier. I've seen, like, lower elos play Sylvanas. Her siege is nasty. Her armor breaking ability, basically, basically she can, like, pierce armor, armor, and she can, like, make you weak. And she can do insane damage to you. Uh, her mobility is very nasty. In higher elo, like higher ranks, like masters and stuff, you will see a lot of Sylvanas players, and they have like like double like in and out that ability. Um, I forgot her name or whatever. Um, it's insane. Like she she's almost like Illidan pretty much, and she's going in, going out, like doing insane damage. Um, she's not that difficult to to learn though, so that's why she's not down here. Um, and I've seen her in lower elo, so that's why she's here. Um, I've seen her a lot in la in lower elos. Not like I haven't seen some of these guys in lower elos. Uh, uh, Tassiter. Uh, Taz is a beefy character. Uh, he's, he's like OP. I'm going to put him in S tier though. Uh, people don't play Taz a lot, but when they play him, he usually win matches. Um, that's why he's, his win rate is pretty high. That's why he's here um, in, in both high and low elo and he can like zone out players uh, He can separate them from that team. He can like do insane siege damage His ultimate is one of those ultimates that you have to like get out of the fight whenever he pop that stuff and uh, Yeah, his ultimate can like really really change team fights like both of his ultimate are, are useful um yeah, he's actually one of the most valued character in a game. Uh, we have Butcher. Butcher is a team dependent character. You basically have to feed the Butcher early on in the match in order for you to get value out of the Butcher later on in the match. Uh, Butcher at 200 stacks is pretty <laughs> scary. 
and then you can actually increase that stat up uh, for your life steal uh, to make it a bit stronger and uh, if you build him right you can basically not die you can go from like 10 hit point fighting like three guys to like eating all of them up and like getting yourself back to like 100 hit point and stuff it's like super insane with the life steal uh, he's a very strong melee character uh, let's see I'm gonna put him in a uh, in C tier uh, because like he's not generic I've seen people play him and I've seen people actually wanting to play him and like people don't get tilted when you pick him most of the time uh, and uh, he's usually used in like higher elos uh, and lower elos as well but you know um, he's a bit of a sleeper though uh, he's a he's a situational type of character Right, he's a very, very, very situational type of character. Um, you want to pick him in the right situations. Um, otherwise, you get countered by people like Takis or like uh, Silence and Polymorph. And like, you know, where is the Silence girl? Where is Lily? Like, stuff like that. Or like Nazibo. You run towards Nazibo. She put that wall up. You get stuck in it and you die and stuff like that. So, anyway, he's very situational and. Uh, your boy lost back him. Obviously, going in D tier. Unnecessarily difficult to play. Multi tax is required. And you have to be like super, super decent with this guy to like get value out of him. Um, yeah, I really won't recommend him to anybody unless like you are personally dedicated to this. Um, to these guys, right? I won't recommend these guys to anybody. Um, they are the lost Vikings. They are very, very insanely. Uh, challenging to play and they can really uh control the map like avatar um they are very very insane to play and stuff like that again it's all about that mindset you have to be very very uh, decent uh with your decision making and like all that stuff he can pressure the map for ever pretty much <laughs> and uh yeah we have throw throw i don't see uh decent throws in lower elo uh throw I'll, I'll put in the generic elo i mean generic uh stuff i really don't see use in playing throw um a lot of people people play him because he's from world of warcraft and a lot of people just like him because he's a world of warcraft character um but honestly you can take other characters and have a lot of value out of them instead of taking throw throw doesn't have life steal like illidan uh he got a root he got some slow with his ultimate and stuff and you got a ground breaker or whatever thing that you do. But I don't know. I don't see a lot of people playing Troll and like playing him right. Um he, he hasn't seen damage though, percentage damage and stuff like that, but I I don't know. I I think he's generic. He's like he's like this guy, right? He's really strong, he got insane damage output and stuff, but I really won't recommend him. Uh we have uh Tracer. Tracer is OP. I'm gonna pull Tracer in the uh, in D tier, um, just because when you're playing her, you need to know how to play her. Um, also, like Tracer, you can basically carry a match with Tracer if you know how to play her properly. Um, actually, I'm gonna pull her here. People know how to kill Tracer. I'm not gonna lie. Like in higher elo, people know how to play her, and she can um, to kill her, and she can get counter and stuff. Uh, people like Nova can kill Tracer. Uh, actually, I think it's the auto. Well, you say the other way around. Like you can slow her and stuff, and I don't think I don't think Nova can. It's a good counter to Tracer. Uh, Genji and Tracer are on an even foot. Genji can kill Tracer. Tracer can kill Genji. Uh, let's see. I don't really see a lot of counter like Tassiter, like a lot of people don't notice, but Tassiter is a counter to Tracer. Um Yeah. Uh Tychus. Tychus is a tank buster. Um I've seen higher ELO and in lower ELO. And Tychus is an STA character, uh, because he just does what he's what he's supposed to do. And his ultimates are both useful. 
um, you can drop the turret, do insane damage, or you yourself can go into the holding mode or whatever and do insane damage and stuff. Tyrio, Tyrio is a sleeper. Um, Tyrio is a very decent tank to have, uh, but not a lot of people play him, and uh, not a lot of people know how to play him. And when you pick him, sometimes it's usually tilting towards your ally. Um, so I'm gonna put Tyrio in the. I don't know. He's not. He's not so generic that you shouldn't play him. Uh, let's see. Tyrio goes. Tyrio is going to go in C tier. Uh, yeah. Tyrio is, is a tank, but he's not like really, really tanky. He's like a bruiser. So. And I haven't seen him a lot in like uh, lower or higher elos. So he's going to be here. He's going to sit there. Uh, Tarande. I've seen Tarande a lot in lower elos and in higher elos. Uh, this stuff should be shooting out dust and seeing damage. And she's a decent counter to Murky and uh, Arbiter. If you know where where they are, you can just like one shot them pretty much. <laughs> so uh, she's really good though. Um, I was I haven't seen decent Tarande. Actually, Tarande he was surprisingly really good. Uh, I'm gonna put her in the uh, in A tier though. Uh, you can get better value out of other characters than her. She got stuns, uh, but it's a very small area. Um, she got like debuffs she can pull on the enemies uh, reducing the armor and stuff and she's really good like her heals is not bad at all so she's in A tier it's not like she's bad like in generic and stuff but you know she's just Tyrande her custom her her uh, skins are pretty decent it's quite busty uh, let's see Uther I've seen Uther a lot in a uh, lower and higher elo. Uther is like one of the, the only tank pretty much that, I mean, the only healer that you can actually tank with. Uh, well, you can tank with this guy, but he, this guy is the main, the ideal tanky guy. And his stuns, he got stuns for days. It's really good. His heal is really insane as well. So he's going to be an S tier for lower and higher elo. Um... I don't know if it's that difficult to learn Uther. Like, you just need to read the skills and, like, just know the meaning of the skills. I think that's the most difficult part of playing Uther. Um, because some of the skills, like, stacks um, kind of combo together. And that's the only thing you need to know. Uh, let's see. Valera. Uh, Valera is... Uh, uh, she gonna be below? No. She's not that generic. She's gonna be in C tier. Uh, Valera, like, you have to dedicate your time to her. Um, she doesn't get camps. Like, she can get Bruiser and stuff. Um, actually, you can get auto camps with her. Um, but yeah, um, there are other characters on this list that can get camps a lot efficiently than Valera. And uh, she's a stealth character. And you guys know that stealth been nerfed. After Stealth got nerfed, like that's when Valera actually lost values, in my opinion. Uh, Valera and like Zera 2 and stuff. But Valera is like that character that you'll play like among people that don't know what they are doing. And you can like get picks with them, right? She's That's why you will play all Stealth characters these days, like if you want to get picks. Um, but usually in higher elo, like people are use, usually moving in groups, right? You can just gang anybody. Like they are usually moving in groups, moving towards objective and stuff like that. So, I don't really think you get a lot of value out of her. Uh, in team fight though, she's really good. I'm not gonna lie, like her ultimate, she can like drop that stuff, go invincible. Invincible. Um, doesn't mean she's not gonna take damage though, but you know, it is what it is. That's why she's in C tier. Like it's not that necessary to play her. Uh, Vala, Vala is gonna go in S tier. I've seen Vala everywhere. She's like super annoying after a rework. And like everybody want to play Vala these days, so everybody in that grandma. Uh, Varian, Varian is gonna go into above A tier. Uh, Varian can beat Sonya. <laughs> Believe it or not, my Varian can smash Sonya. My Varian can like counter anybody, anybody. 
and my variant is not colossal smash variant my variant is not tons um, variant even though both of those are, are really decent my variant is twin blade the original variant and uh yeah he's just really good like no matter which path you pick with Viren, he's just gonna be that good. So he's gonna be S tier for anybody, any tier level. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hiker. Oh my god, I'm drawing blanks here. Uh, this m magical lady. I'm gonna put pick her and uh put her in the uh, in the. Uh, She's not generic. I'm gonna put her in C tier. Uh, C tier because like not a lot of people play her, not a lot of people put in the effort to learn her, and not a lot of people are interested in her. Um, she got a lot of potential, but she's only getting this potential in higher elo, uh, where higher elo guys can play her properly and stuff like that. Zul. Uh, Zul. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put him in the uh, in uh, C tier as well. Uh, a lot of people don't play Zul. Zul is like a sleeper, but he's a really really strong character, and I see him in uh, in higher rank more than I'm seeing lower rank. So he's gonna be he's gonna be where it, like the skill cap is high, but in higher elo you can play him and get value out of him. Uh, Yurio, Yurio is a bruiser uh bruisers uh like supposed to be in your face and stuff and that's what she does best um she can get camps which is what one of the important thing for bruisers and she's very tanky uh you're is gonna be in d tier because like lower elos i wouldn't recommend them to play uh you real because she's not that easy to learn um however she's like really really uh decent in higher elo where like people know what they are doing with her and stuff like that and because like she's like she's a sleeper too like not a lot of people play her right she's it's rare it's kind of rare to like find a euro player uh so that's why she's in d tier uh zagara a lot of people think zagara is nerfed but she's not nerfed at all uh, i'm gonna take zagara i'm gonna put her in d tier um just because like Zagara, the only thing here is that she's so squish, right? Um, but in the right hand, Zagara can like control the entire map, like these guys, like all of these guys can control matches, right? Um, control the map as well. Uh, most of these guys, well, apart from this girl, uh, but her, her way of controlling is different, right? It's like really like, it's it's like so insane that you won't actually believe what happened. Like any of match in like 10 seconds. I mean, in like 10 minutes or like, uh, 15 minutes and stuff like that. That's her control. Um, let's see. Uh, Zario. Zarya. Zarya is a Russian. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm going to take Zarya. She's a bruiser. I'm going to take her and put her in the C tier. Um, Zarya is really good. I don't see a lot of uh, new player. Like, I don't see a lot of... Uh, Let's take this. So we're kind of getting cold in here. Uh, I need tissue. I don't see a lot of uh, lower tier ELO guys playing Zarya. So I'm not going to rank her uh, up. Um, I play Zarya, like, I think I'm, like, the only person who's dedicated to play, um, characters like Zarya, uh, Probius, and, like, players, like, I mean, uh, characters like Illidan and, and Rexar, right, and Tyrael, these are the characters that I'm dedicated to, um, anyways, not a lot of people see values in playing these guys, Zarya got Gravel Bomb, pretty much, um, where is it, Gazlo, where is Gazlo, right, Zarya got a Gravel Bomb out, in a sense, uh, she got shields as well, and she got insane damage, like, insane damage. Like, you can do camps, you can do bosses, and all that stuff with Zarya at a, at a lower level, right? Like, you can you can be, like, level level 2 doing some camps that, that requires the entire team to do with Zarya. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Zeratu uh, still got nerfed, right? As I said earlier, and that really devalued Zeratu. Um, Zeratu used to be super powerful, like in the past. Like I would enter a match and get like 20 kills, right? 18 kills, 20 kills per match with uh, Zeratu. But now, after Sturf nerf, like it's so hard for you to play Zeratu. His his skill cap have gotten so high um, that only like top tier players, like um, higher elo players, know how to play properly. So I'm gonna put him in D tier because Zeratu can be on every, any side of the map at any time. Uh, it's kind of like Nova and stuff. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Like you have to be really good with him to like play him, and your team have to kind of like agree. Because like you can actually tilt people just by picking Zera too. Uh Zojan. Uh Zojan is also Zojan bot got reworked. I think he got nerfed. Um I'm gonna pull Zojan in the in C tier. Uh because in higher elo people play Zojan. In lower elo, I don't see Zojan that much. Um Zojan is uh he used to be my favorite. He used to be one of my favorites, um, but now like he's like so he's a bit generic. Like they like nerfed the guy, man. Like he used to be a lot stronger than this. Um, you need to like I think there's like a single path that you go now. Like they they the most important build on Zujin used to be attack speed build, but now it's like all about uh, takedowns, right? You have to go that quest uh, for takedown, and you have to like wait for your takedown uh, to be complete before you start doing insane damage to people but i used to go attack speed build on zojan i used to get insane amount of kills with them and stuff like that so all right this is the tier list right again uh s tier is for higher uh elo and lower elo guys and character that you really want to you won't regret learning right these characters you won't regret learning and all of these characters have value in higher and lower elo and you can bring, bring contribute um, advantage to team fights and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and they are very valuable. Uh, A tiers are characters that are in higher and lower elo, but not a lot of players split them um, in both in both elos, like higher elos and lower elos, and not a lot of players split them the right way. Um, and it's easy for you to tilt your allies when you pick these guys. Um, yeah, so this this is it, right? Um, and some of them have some flaws, right? So they have some flaws. Uh, that's A tier. B tier is these guys are just they are like the, the the bottom of the tier list. Like if you are doing like from high to low, like these guys are like the the bottom of the tier list because you can get a lot of values out of picking something else other than them. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> I don't know what I'll be here at all. Uh, so yeah, so that's that. Um, the, I mean, C tier are these guys. As you go down the tiers now, these these are like the higher elos uh, guys. Um, you have to be in higher elos to play these characters and play them efficiently. And like, if you play them in higher elo, people will know how to comp with you. I mean, if you're playing them in higher elo and you have people that know how to comp with you, you can actually get some decent value. But these guys actually have a little bit of flaws, and they can get counter a lot easier, in a sense. Uh, these guys are guys that, when you know how to play them, it's really hard for them to get countered. Uh, but you have to have a really high skill cap understanding. Um, you have to reach the skill cap in order to get good value out of them. And uh, all these guys like are characters that people don't bother to play in lower elos and stuff like that because they think they are nerfed when they are not or they think they are not that useful when they actually they actually are or they are that they are way too difficult to learn in the first place and stuff like that or people just don't play them properly right these guys are like these guys are stuff that i won't recommend to like lower elo guys and you have to be like really really decent to play these guys and when if you, if you know how to play them you can bring insane value to team fights like she is actually the best healer but in the right hand right she have to be in the right hand to be one of these i mean the best healer in it in a match and he is actually the best healer if he's in the right hand right um 
you, where you actually won't find these guys in lower elo you'll find them in higher elo right this guy is like one of the best bruisers and one of these best bruisers and stuff like that one of the best assassins and stuff like that right so uh that is my tier list uh thanks for watching um subscribe if you're new i, I don't really release videos uh so i'm just gonna say that um, anyways, I, I I noticed that a lot of people like my tier list. Every time I make a god video, god video um, analyzing characters, a lot of people like it. Uh, so this is it uh, for Hero of the Storm. Uh, have any question? Go ahead and ask. I'll be able to answer you as soon as possible. And uh, catch you guys later. Peace out.